Hello, good evening. Uh, I'm Marek, organizer of MLMU in Prague, and this is Machine Learning Meetup. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, LinkedIn, website, mlmu.cz or meetup.com, which is, I would say, uh, the best one to always find the most up-to-date uh, information about uh, what we are what we are preparing. And you can also always reach out uh, to us uh, using any of those channels or our email. We are always open to any suggestions, your feedback, and, and any suggestions regarding possible uh, talks. Uh, even today is a great example where uh, we actually uh, were reached out by the speakers to organize this kind of event. And so today we will talk about chatbots with two great engin engineers from Prometist AI and FeedU with Tomasz and Honza. But first, uh, let me thank to our partners from uh, Seznam, uh, Rosum, Konica Minolta, SAS, Biano, Chiron Hegel, and Data Clare. Uh, without them, we wouldn't be able to organize this for or already about seven years. And during the talks uh, in this online setup, we usually uh, collect the questions on Slido. So uh, whenever you want to ask a question, go to sly.do uh, slash MLMU and ask your questions there. And we will cover, we will cover those questions uh, after each of those talks. Also, after the second talk, uh, don't run away. Uh, we will move to a networking session at a uh, link that we will share at the end of the uh, our session, our meetup. And you may even hear stuff that was not suitable for streamed video. And you could ask questions that uh, you didn't want to ask on Slido or whatever. But now let me get to Tomasz. Let me put Tomasz on the screen. And uh, let me say that Tomasz is an LP engineer from uh, FeedU. Uh, and he will tell us more about their experience uh, building the chatbots for real world use. And hopefully, he will tell us whether chatbots are still just a hype or whether uh, there is a good use for it. So welcome, Tomasz. It's, it's yours. Thank you. So hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today. And I'm happy to share with you our journey uh, with chatbots and actually how we use simple models to uh, improve internet matching. Uh, so thank you also, Marek, for introduction of me. Uh, as uh, he said, I'm software engineer. And because I like uh, machine learning, uh, so at FIDU, uh, my role is to pick up the, some interesting uh, frameworks or libraries and technologies which could help us to, to have like uh, better products and have uh, so that our customers can have better uh, experience and then we can just be better. So first of all, I would like to tell you about actually what we do. Uh, so uh, FIDU is uh, developing a tool for building uh, chatbots. It's called the uh, Feedbot uh, Designer. And <clears throat> there you can uh, build chatbots and then deploy them to the uh, channels, such as uh, Facebook uh, and uh, web chat and so on. So how actually, how the building looks like uh, the chatbots. Uh, the, most major, the vast majority of our chatbots run on three, three structure. So that means that there's just like some scenarios which we provide and uh, then the chatbots follow uh, the, the route. <clears throat> there can be like more things. It could be quite rich. Uh, you can work with uh, variables. Uh, then you can use uh, switches to, to select the proper route. You can also do some uh, calls to get some info from other, other services. You can also store uh, your date, some collected data to another services like HR systems and so on. So this is like how the our designer look like. You can just drag and drop and build uh, the, the tree structure. But uh, as uh, Mark mentioned, the real world bots are quite, uh, so as he mentioned, like if we have a good use for it, 
And uh, we have we have uh, many cases which are very very nice, and I will tell a little bit later. And usually those cases are have one one similarity, and it's that they are very complex. Very often, if the chatbot uh, should be helpful for our customers and, and like clients, it should solve some more complex task. It's just not just saying hello, uh, I'm chatbot uh, Franta, and uh, how are you? It's also about how to get data. Uh, from other systems, collect something from users, then store it, and so on. And the three structures are very, very like deep, and there's like hundreds of dialogues and, and conditions. Uh, this is one of the examples, uh, which is quite successful chatbot. It's for our partner Ipsos, and this one focus on uh, market research. So just ask people and collect some some answers for some questions, then and then then like process the data. And uh, how can this be beneficial? Why chatbots could help in this, in this way and in these examples? So uh, when we reach uh, the customers with uh, the chatbot, usually the 72 persons uh, of the queries don't need any further human interaction. So the support, the real people can focus on like complex problems and then they have to uh, solve everything because there is a possible automation which can, which can solve this. Also, what is interesting that uh, like half of the people like to use the chatbot out of outside morning hours. It means that like uh, during let's say uh, trip from work, they just go to to Facebook and then replies and use the chatbot whenever they want. So those are usually those two killing features which makes chatbots very usable and uh, actually beneficial for, for our customers. So uh, as we as also we can see in the, in the title of the talk, it's about using NLP and how we use it. So inside this tree structure, you can define uh, some points and there you can usually just uh, uh, fo let, uh, fo follow the user. Because as I said, the the structure is very, usually very complex and very often the users use it multiple times. It's, and they know what they want, but to go through the whole path, it's quite long and exhausting and it's quite boring actually. So in this case, we use NLP to move people to the position to the tree where they want to go. Uh, in the designer, you can uh, create the NLP models uh, you define intents, which are the points in the tree where you want to uh, move the users. And during the, the movement, you can also store some variables, do some another calls and so on. And those intents you specify by defining examples, how usually uh, users will ask uh, on those problems. And then from those, we train the NLP model to work. This is some example of our chatbot uh, on Fidu uh, website. It's a HR one, which is another uh, like a domain which where our chatbot was very successful. And you can ask the chatbot whatever you want. Uh, it can either just reply with one message. It can show multiple messages. It can uh, also uh, ask another like uh, things. And also it collects feedback whether the, the answer was successful or not, like it means when it helped or not to the user. So this is quite good, right? Uh, and uh, so, but of course could be better. And in this way, we need to look at the data which are coming. So uh, first I would like to introduce a little bit how the user inputs look like. So we have a histogram here uh, where we show uh, in the x x x axis uh, the word count, which means like how many words are in the user input, and we also show uh, in the red line uh, what's the match rate uh, of intent, which means uh, this is those data are from one month of one uh, QA bot. So you can see, uh, like in total, there were like more than 4,000 queries. And here you can see like what's the distribution and actually the, the successful matching. 
the most inputs are very short, let's say one or two words. What is interesting that 25% uh, of those data are usually like data which doesn't make much sense. It's usually saying like, hello, like, how are you? And those kind of like both tricking bots, both just uh, typing something maybe randomly. Uh, and usually those inputs, which are not meant to, to mean something, anything, they are one or two words. Uh, so if we deducted it, it would be the most uh, like common is two words examples, which are coming. Uh, you can see that uh, longer the text is, the user inputs, usually the, the worse is the, uh, the result. It means that the short, short text, we are able to match quite uh, efficiently and successfully. But for long text, uh, the, the rate is actually dropping quite fast. Uh, there are also some examples like user inputs when the when the when it has like more than like 50 words and then we are like very not successful. Uh, so this doesn't look that bad, but of course you would like to improve it. So how, how can we improve it? So here I would like to tell you about three approaches we tried, uh, what were the results and actually which one we, we ended up with. So first one is using better model. So to start with, we are now using NLP.js, which is actually quite small JavaScript library. And it, this one is developed mainly for chatbots. It's very easy to use and provides, as you can see, quite good results. This is just one trial for, for another HR bot. And we, because NLP.js provided us quite good examples, but we are questioning whether if we would use something like fast text from Facebook, if we get better results. Uh, we tried it and we cannot say that like NLP JS is better, but for us, it doesn't mean that uh, fast text would serve us much better. And at first it could look quite strange because if you compare those two libraries, the fast text is definitely complex or more complex, uh, has more features and this quite huge and should be better, right? And if you look at it, uh, the problem is usually the user input. As, I, as you saw in the data analysis, usually it's one or two words. And for this purpose, it's uh, quite tricky for fast text to, to get some context. Uh, also, uh, as we have multiple chatbots and every chatbot has its own NLP models. We don't have uh, one common, which we use across chatbots. We train uh, for every chatbot its own NLP model. And usually, if you look at it, uh, when people are like creating a chatbot and its model, they usually use, let's say, 10 or 20 intents and specified by max 20 examples. And this is really, really small data. And for fast text, it's a uh, too little to, to usually work with it. And for NLP, as it's like super easy, <laughs> then it's, it's, it's good because uh, it can then handle the short, uh, short inputs quite well. It's also limiting that we cannot, let's say, build something on context and so on. But for us, it's, it's actually quite good because it does very good, great performance for the cost. And like, it's easy and fast. So like the, Every time you train a model, it takes only a few seconds. It takes like three seconds to train a model on, on Azure for us. So actually we will use this and later we will show you how we are actually abusing this little bit to, to help us. Uh, also our code base is in JavaScript. So it's much easier to catch up for the, with this language than use like Python and so on. What is also a nice, uh, nice feature of an LPGS that it has native entities recognition. It means uh, in the user input, it can recognize uh, tag uh, amounts, it can recognize dates, and also it can recognize uh, custom entities, which we will show also show you how we use it uh, later. So how 
NLP.js work and how we use it actually. So this is just a small overview. Of what are the steps when we are matching the intent? First, we normalize the input, which means we remove the acritics, uh, dots, and so on. Then we tokenize it uh, by splitting it by spaces. And then we have a list of words. Uh, first, we try to remove stop words, like uh, ends and so on, and prepositions. But actually, in the end, because the user input is super short, uh, removing the stop words is actually making it a little bit more tricky for the model, so it doesn't help that much. So actually now we are keeping them to have at least something there. Then we do stemming. Uh, so we are removing the endings and then it goes to neural network. Uh, the output of this uh, process is the confidence for intents we have and also the list of uh, entities which were found. What is uh, what, else, what we have fun with sometimes is check language and stemming because the built-in stemmer for NLP.js has some fun results and actually sometimes make us crazy because it's very tricky to debug it, why, why it's behaving so bad. And very often it's because of uh, stemming. So that was the first, first possibility uh, to use more complex model over our current NLP.js but for us doesn't have such benefits that we would like to go this way. So we tried another way uh, because very often the, when we match the user input, it happens that it's, it cannot decide between more, more intents. And so we tried to, instead having one model, we tried to split it to more models per, per bot and divide the intent. So then it's easier to match the, the proper one if we like, you know, separate it and divide. And actually it worked. It worked quite well. The, the matching rate was much, much better. But what then happened and what we noticed that it actually brings another problem, which is even worse. And it is that we match intents, which we really should not match. Uh, let's say we have this small talk uh, model and because our users really like to trick the bot and ask him or her if he will marry him, marry them, we have this uh, in place. And one example was meet me at the altar. And because the word meet was only once uh, in the whole small talk model, when the user asked the bot to schedule a meeting, uh, this intent was matched. And uh, it's super not correct, right? And it was more confident to that it's this one than the correct one. We solved this a little bit by, by having like fallback models. So marking some models as like, just use it in case you don't match it. But in general, uh, it doesn't work uh, that much because uh, the, the user experience when you show them wrong answer is much worse than when you say, sorry, I didn't understand. And as you saw, we are very good in matching like, uh, or much better in matching shorter, shorter inputs. When we don't understand the user, we can also tell them like, okay, please try to use some like uh, just few words and be like the proper ones, which, which could help us. So that was the second choice we made and we also didn't go farther with it because it brought more, more problems than, than the benefits. And then we ended up with uh, looking at it another way. Uh, as I said, we try to split the models because very often uh, there were similar intents. And it actually is a problem and we would like them to, to have it like the easier models like easier structure, like less intense, because then it would work better. So let's say I will now show you this example with password, which is quite obvious that it will be a problem for NLP, but let's take it as an example. So we have uh, two intents. One is for forgotten password and one is for new password. And actually, if we have those two intents and users ask something as a password, the model usually doesn't know which of them to choose because they are too similar. 
So what we could do is uh, make one intent only, uh, which will be called password. And then with a named entity, we can try to guess the action uh, which the user wants to perform. So here you can see in examples that we use action. And this one, this action is the named entity, the custom one, which we made and has two possibilities. One is forgotten and one is new. So when we match the, the user input, first we know that intent's password and then we know the action he wants to perform or she. Uh, if we don't know it, it doesn't matter. It's actually not a problem, we can then ask. So you can see now in the dialog, which will be triggered that if we know the, the action and it's forgotten, we will run a forgotten branch. Uh, if it's reset one, we will go to the reset one. And if we don't know, we can still ask the user, hey, what would you like to do with the password? And this actually brings really good results and behaves very good for, for users as well because whenever they type something, even if you don't understand the action, we can still ask uh, for more clarification. And the bot is actually like talking with them and has a very good feeling from this. So uh, how, to, how to use this? Because uh, let's start from the scratch and look at another way. So usually the problem is that the structure of the NLP model is not that uh, straightforward. And what we need to do is help users uh, in the designer to notice this. So every time a user changes the, the NLP model, we can train the model because as we mentioned, it's super fast, it takes us three seconds. Then we match every, in, every example which we have uh, specified. And if it does not match the proper intent or it can match multiple intents with so like low difference and confidence, we can show the warning to the user. So then you will see that, okay, uh, this example, your chatbot is also matching who you are. It means that those two intents are overlapping and user should pay attention make some changes, then uh, train the model again and, and again, again. So that was our journey, uh, how we went, uh, how we actually are able to use those easy models, which are, which don't have many functionalities, but for us uh, in this, in this like chatbot world, when the user inputs are very short and usually we have model for every chatbot, it help us to, to have better results and help us also that we are communicating with the user much, much more and asking the like this like, for more details so we can measure it properly. So uh, thank you for, for, for listening to me. And you can also check our website uh, at Kokuma. Uh, of course we are hiring, so please check it if you're interested or reach me or, or feed you directly. Awesome. Thanks, Tomasz, for your talk. And I will bring up the Slido with the questions. So just give me a second. And before I manage to share the questions, let me ask you, when did you start uh, working on chatbots in general. Was it, was it in Fidu or? Yes, yes, you... it was in Fidu actually. Uh, it's many years ago. And so I started uh, when I was just a software engineer uh, without the, the NLP part. It was, we started as a, like, a, like small, but then I went to more like uh, machine learning then introduced NLP and uh, we build it on this. Okay, cool. So we can already see the questions on the screen. Mm -hmm. So let's start from the top. So do you know of any chatbots deployed in business that would be trained as one big end-to-end -end model? And I guess it doesn't mean your business. Yeah, uh, we try to use, let's say for, uh, if you have one domain like HR and very often the questions are similar. It's about salary, it's about benefits and so on. For those chatbots, 
we try to use one uh, one common one common model which would like serve all the requests and but it was then more tricky to tra retraining it because and be like the inputs were coming from multiple sources so for us actually it doesn't work and personally i don't know about it i think maybe watson have something like this mm -hmm. maybe uh, but uh, i don't know i don't know it for sure but i would guess so okay thanks the next question is uh, regarding nlp.js do you use javascript for your whole code base including the training or just the production yes we we use it uh, from a to z how to say so we use javascript only uh for like personally or like for any machine learning engineer or something like this of course we do some testing and prototyping in python on and or what, whatever we need so it's, but it's usually just to check it and but for like real like code or something like this we don't we don't use it we just okay. sometimes want to check it for example as i mentioned we tried fast text so we want to be sure at least what are the possibilities, how can we use it? And actually we are trying to avoid uh, another programming language because it's more complex. Which, uh, and when it's not necessary, we just try to keep uh, JavaScript. Ah, but that's awesome. Uh, I can imagine that switching to JavaScript, if that was not your... <laughs> uh, uh, number one language before could be quite tricky. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> sorry. So the next question is, is your model always working just with one message or do you create context with the previous messages and would it help? Ah, that's a tricky question. I think it's a very good one, actually. Uh, so we know some context because we know the user who is asking or, or like, so we know some, some history. We know the position when, when, where the user is asking from. So let's say we have like some basic branches. Let's say we have a FNQ uh, chatbot for employees and for customers. So from this point, we are able to decide which, which branch is it and uh, what's kind of like another attribute for the user. So we can use this way, but we don't know about the, if you, let's say, ask many times on different topics, we don't know this. We can, mm -hmm. what we can do, for example, we can make a call to another, another system and get some like, data if we would need it, but we don't know the, let's say, chatting history. Okay. It would be, I'm not sure if it actually really would help because but maybe I didn't mention like, usually it's about uh, not really matching. If that we are not matching the, the intents, it's very often that the intents are scoped and user are asking questions which actually we cannot answer. Mm -hmm. And in this way, it doesn't help. It could, I think it could definitely be better but it's not something we would like to invest, let's say, two years of development because of like it would be two times better. OK, cool. So let's cover uh, those three last questions. Mm -hmm. and we'll see whether it will be fast enough. Uh, so in your chart, it seems that with longer input, the success rate decreases uh, despite the shorter messages not making uh, I guess it meant sense. Do you know why? Usually the, the longer one are are like in a format that, hello, uh, my name is Peter. I like your company. I also follow you for two years. And uh, by the way, I, I don't know the password. And so usually there is uh, the information like overhead is there huge. So. With, therefore, it's we are very bad in matching, and usually those longer ones are very concrete. So let's say they don't ask like general questions, which we could catch, but they ask very concrete one. It's mm -hmm. the same, let's say, for for like shorter ones. If we have HR bot and you ask like about the new role or whatever, then we can usually catch it. But when you say 
mm, I would like to be a doorman or some specific role. Usually that one we cannot catch because we don't have the data for it. Right. So more concrete is actually the the input is worse the matching is. Okay, cool, thanks. Did you try to fine tune one of the big language models based on transformer architecture? These models can help to solve the problem with a small amount, amount of data. Uh, to be honest, no. We tried the like fastex with different like uh, vector sizes or the vector space sizes. But for us, actually, as we train a lot of models and we train very often, uh, this like bigger models, I would say, would increase the, the Azure spend, which is not uh, mm -hmm. that much intended. So I think it could be a way, but uh, for us to go through this, is we didn't try it yet. So maybe it's uh, for future to, mm -hmm. to have a nice task. Okay. Thanks. And last question. Does it mean every customer needs to teach bot common intents as you use new model every time? Uh, for the specific domain, yes, because usually our chatbots are very different. They don't have, let's say, because the company are different, they use different products and so on. So those, yes. Uh, we have also some small talk model because so we can use those. So it can just that was the one with Ma will you marry me and so on. So we have one small talk model and then the specific ones. Okay, cool. Thank you, Tomasz, for all the answers. I'm sorry we cannot go through all of the questions, but as I mentioned, we will have the networking. So uh, definitely join the networking after the talk and Tomasz will be there to answer the questions that uh, we missed here. So thanks again. Thank you, uh, and I'll see you at the networking. And now we are getting to Honza uh, from Prometist AI. Seems that Honza is a little bit laggy, but hopefully it will be better. Uh, anyway, let me start with a quick question, Honza, before I uh, introduce you. Uh, when did you start uh, working on chatbots? Because I don't know if you remember, but uh, we met like four or maybe five years ago when you started I working, remember. I believe, on your first chatbot. Yes, yes, that's exactly true. I, I started developing chatbots in late 2016 uh, when I started my PhD study at the uh, uh, Faculty of Electrical Engineering. And uh, we started developing our first Alexa Price chatbot uh, uh, for the competition. And that was the time uh, I was uh, first encountered by the chatbots. Awesome. And, and that's actually great because I think that it's exactly the moment where only a few hardcore guys were actually doing. Uh, and so don't take me. So, uh, you, you know, uh, I know that usually everybody was talking about chatbots and how they want to do chatbots, but only a few guys were actually doing uh, reasonable work at the time. So, so good thing that you uh, kept up uh, your work. So Honza is uh, now in Prometist AI, as he already mentioned, I think that it was four times uh, with Prometist uh, when they actually achieved top three, I believe, in Alexa uh, price by Amazon. But uh, I will let Honza to uh, correct me if I was wrong with the number four. Uh, but the most important part is that the recent year, they actually won the, the price against uh, the competition from other world universities. Uh, so that, that's, a, that's a great achievement. And now Honza will tell you more about how they are actually turning their experience from this kind of adventures into a real world product and something that can be used in the real world. So Honza, it's yours. Thank you, Marek, for a kind introduction. 
Uh, I would like to uh, talk about lessons learned uh, from using Flowstone conversation uh, AI platform. And even during the dark times when there were no Flowstone conversation AI platform. Uh, just let me tell something about me. Uh, I work as an NLP engineer, uh, engineering lead at Prometheus AI, and I'm also finishing my PhD study at Faculty of Electrical Engineering at CTU in Prague. And uh, as Marek already mentioned, I was a team leader for the first three years of uh, Alexa, Kram uh, Alexa Prize competition, and we competed uh, four times and uh, we, we won the, the last year of the Alexa Prize competition with Alquist, not with Prometheus. Those are two separate uh, projects. So let me sn sneak peek uh, into the past uh, just a little bit. Into the past uh, when uh, we were working, uh, working on Alquist. That's why the change of, uh, of the presentation theme. And we... Uh, we were in the Alexa Prize competition several times, and I would like to just introduce the, what uh, what is the purpose of the competition uh, itself. Basically, the uh, the task of the competition is simple: to create a coherent and engaging social bot. And what does it mean? And uh, what are the implications of of this task? So basically. Your goal is to create a conversation that has no specific goal, just to entertain uh, uh, the user. So you need to cover as, my, uh, as much of the topics as you can. And even then, you, you need to ha handle long tail content with some generic conversation or some, some clever scenarios, generative models, uh, whatever, whatever you find like, suitable for, uh, for this task. And basically, because the conversation needs to be engaging, we need to manage uh, manage the content uh, more or less uh, manually uh, to some extent, of course. And uh, that's why we need to create those conversational models, dialogues uh, quickly, test it quickly, improve it quickly, and uh, Im uh, implement some dialogue management logic, uh, which selects the dialogues and drives the conversation further. Last but not least is to use some external knowledge uh, which can, uh, which can uh, help with the engagement of the uh, engagingness of the conversation and uh, include some, some, uh, some up-to-date uh, information such as uh, sport match results or uh, information about, about movies. So as I was telling, uh, you need to you need to uh, create some uh, some dark scenarios, but, and you quickly realize that there is no chance to create some uh, dark flows uh, using just code. So you need some visual editor, and this is a screenshot of our first version of the visual conversation editor, and. Uh, it worked, but uh, it came with a lot of struggles uh, we need to deal uh, deal with uh, because the flow was uh, kind of complicated. We designed visually a flow, then we export it into code, and then we train uh, those uh, respective uh, natural language understanding models. Then we implement some uh, some custom logic, and then we redeploy entire application. So you can imagine the, the whole process of the developing individual individual dialogues into the uh, into the bot it was quite a long process. Uh, not even mentioning the the logic about these individual dialogues. For example, you have a dialogue about a, a favorite movie. Then you you want to group the movie related dialogue into some uh, some kind of uh, Topic notes and implement some high-level uh, high-level intent recognition with combination pair dialogue intent recognition and you need to switch between topics and implement some starting conditions for each uh, for uh, each of the dialogue. So basically, uh, when the when the application grew, it started to be a little bit messy, and we we struggled mainly with the uh, development speed. Uh, 
and the versioning of the code, uh, as I was saying, the, the visual, visual state of the dialogue was separate from the code state of the dialogue. Uh, and we uh, introduced a lot of edge cases in the high level decision logic. So uh, those, those are the struggles. We, we considered uh, into when we when we developed the applications further and let me get back to the present back to the flowstorm which is a platform developed by Prometheus AI uh, from scratch uh, it is uh, it is developed by the Prometheus AI not not by uh, it is not part of the uh, part of the social bot in the uh, in the competition, it is important to note. And here you can see some uh, some screenshot of uh, of the most common view uh, in our conversational AI platform. So basically, there is there is a small window with uh, dialogue uh, dialogue flow where you can drag and drop some uh, basic uh, basic notes such as intents or speeches uh, or, or or function notes. You can you can directly uh, write the code here in the platform. There is no need to export it some uh, somewhere else, and then write the code in your uh, in your favorite uh, IDE. You can you can all do it uh, in the platform, and you can just click the run button and and run the dialog uh, with some kind of build of build process, which takes uh, uh, only seconds. So you can you can easily and quickly build individual content into uh, into your application and uh, extend it uh, optionally with some, with some 3D avatars or generative models, which I will be talking about later. Well, it is uh, out of the scope of, the, uh, of this presentation to cover the f uh, full functionality of the platform, and uh, I will focus only uh, only for some um, on some uh, critical dialogue design patterns we choose uh, on our way, which which uh, influenced the decision uh, how how we will be how the how the uh, how the applications will be structured and how the intent recognition is going to work. Those are uh, just some picked uh, picked words which describes our uh, our platform the most so we we call it we say that we develop digital personas on our platform and uh, we can quickly share the, the content we we developed uh, we can quickly test it uh, extend it uh, and we use uh, custom nlu models uh, and generative models uh, for for uh, the enhancement of this application so what is the approach I, i'm talking about we uh, we decided to have the application consisted of sub dialogues and uh, it leads to some kind of sub dialogue hierarchy and this leads to intent recognition hierarchy so basically we have small pieces of the dialogue we call sub dialogue and uh, the the main uh, the main part of the of each application is something which we call the main dialogue something which is triggered when you start uh, using uh, the application so basically you start using the application and then uh, then you you are following the flow based on the some based on some functions or recognized intents and then you can encounter this these uh, pink uh, diamond nodes or purple ones i don't know and those are this one this one and uh, this is the sub dialogue node and the sub dialogue nodes only uh, refers to some and other uh, to another sub dialogue so basically when you reach this sub dialogue node you will enter the sub dialogue itself which starts with the enter node and ends with the exit node basically you you are following the flow in the sub dialogue and when you reach the exit node then you are returned into the main dialogue so basically you can you can structure your application into in this small in these small pieces which uh 
I, I will talk about the benefits uh, on the next slide. Yes. What it is for? The key aspect of this uh, is the uh, reusability. So imagine you have a, a sub dialog which is suitable for multiple application. So basically you can plug it into weather application, into for film application, and into uh, application about favorite movie. Moreover, the application is modular, so it can be better maintained. You can share uh, those individual individual sub dialogues uh, across the applications. You can share it to some other users, and uh, the development of this application in in this form is a lot more easier when you are working on small dialogues because you can test it separately. And as I was saying, there is a consequence of hierarchical intent recognition. So intent recognition, uh, in intent recognition, we uh, distinguish these four cases, uh, general cases, I would say. We have something which we are uh, calling local intents. Local intents is something that uh, follows uh, immediately after a bot asks you a question or says something. Uh, so basically, for example, if the bot asks you, uh, how are you? And then it expects you, you say, I fi I'm fine or I'm bad. Those are the examples of the local intent. Additionally, there are, uh, there are global intents which are applicable uh, in every turn in the specific dialogue. So for example, you have some dialogue which uh, have the help, uh, help function or something that will tell you uh, the possibilities of, uh, of the specific dialogue. And then in every turn, you can, you can say, help me or something like that. And the help global intent is triggered and uh, it, uh, it redirects you to the part of, uh, of the application that will, uh, that will tell you the capabilities. Additionally, there are global intents in the uh, in the parent dialogues. So uh, if you recall the image from the previous slide where there, is, there, were, uh, there was a main dialogue and a sub dialogue. So basically if you are currently, uh, the flow is, when, when the flow is currently in the sub dialogue, all the global intents from the main dialogue uh, are also active. So the illustration is the stop intent when you, uh, you want to stop the application, so basically you can you can implement the stop function on on the higher level of your application. And even if you are uh, if you are deep in in some uh, in the sub dialogue structure, the stop intent is still still active. And last but not least, but the very important class uh, is the out of domain. This is something uh, which is. Uh, when the user says something which is not uh, applicable to any of the local intents or the global intents, then it falls into the out of domain. And we then we need to handle the conversation in some kind of logic uh, that is uh, implemented behind the out of domain action. I will be talking about it later. So what do we uh, need uh, during the out of domain detection? So we need to detect non-relevant utterances, something the, which is which is not covered in the uh, in the dialogue flow. So it is uh, it is obvious that in uh, our out of domain cases uh, there are there is a different set of out of domain utterances for each uh, uh, for each part of the application. This leads to an infinite set of utterances. So basically, you cannot you cannot enumerate some uh, representable set of the uh, of the out of domain utterances to use as an uh, training data. So we needed to come with the approach that uh, that doesn't need explicit uh, out of domain training examples. Well, uh, what is it all for? Is it is it really necessary to uh, distinguish or to divide these uh, these intents into these categories I, I was talking about? 
we believe so because as you can see on this slide uh, in all of our application the average uh, average rate of the local intents is 73 percent global intents are triggered in 11 percent and the out of domain utterances are recognized in 16 percent obviously there is a disclaimer that these numbers are uh, uh, these numbers depend on the on the dialogue structure. If if you implement your application with no global intents, there will be zero percent of in global intent. But we have uh, we have several applications, so uh, I believe these numbers are getting more and more representable. So, what's the uh, how does the uh, how do these uh, models look like in uh, in the point of view of the machine learning models. So basically, we have one model per each uh, per each uh, decision space, uh, decision part of the uh, of uh, of the application. In each turn, uh, when the when the bot waits for some uh, utterance, there is one machine learning model for local intents. Additionally, there is one machine learning model for um, all of the global intents per dialogue and there is uh, an out of domain uh, out of domain class so based on the based on the sub dialogue structure you can you can have uh, multiple combination of global intents local intents and out of domain uh, classes which leads uh, to a variable number of classes that uh, the that the system need to uh, need to uh, classify into uh, in in every turn. So what is the what is the approach? Because as I was saying, we have multiple models, and these models need to be combined. And uh, uh, it is it is not an easy task, but it comes with uh, a lot of benefits, such as uh, such as modular uh, mo uh, modular development, when you can test it separately and then just plug it into your application, and uh, then it uh, works the same as it worked when you test it separately. So the intent recognition uh, there are there are two. Uh, two intent recognition approaches we were we were using, and uh, more of the uh, more of the approaches we are uh, we are testing right now. But at, at first we came with the approach that uh, we uh, with, with the approach that we call the bottom. It, that means that at the first we classify the user utterance into the local intents so for example uh, bot ask uh, the user uh, how are you and the user says something we can then match it to uh, against the local intents plus the, the out of domain class if it's uh, the out of domain then then we move to another level to the global intents and do the same if it uh, falls into uh, into one of the intents uh, then we select the corresponding intent. Otherwise, we we continue uh, to the next level until the top of the stack is is reached, and then we call that uh, that the utterance is out of domain. This uh, this approach uh, came with the disadvantage of the requirement of uh, the explicit out of domain examples, which is something we we don't want to use. So uh, we came up with the second uh, second approach called, called top down, and uh, in this approach we first classify into the into the corresponding level whether it is a global intent or global intent uh, in in the parent dialogue uh, or out of domain or the local intent, and when there is a level selected, then we use a specific model uh, for the level to. Uh, classify the intent into one specific uh, classify the utterance into one specific intent well i was talking about uh, out of domain uh, quite a lot and and now we move uh, to the part when we need to do something with the recognized out of domain re responses 
One part is to recognize it, which is challenging enough itself. And the second part is to react f uh, for these out of domain utterances, which is which is even harder because you, these, as I was saying, uh, the out of domain utterances are uh, are infinite. There are infinite possibilities, so you would need to uh, design infinite uh, number of, of the flows or something something generic like uh, like I don't understand or something like that. So you cannot you cannot even uh, predict uh, how many situations you would need to uh, you would need to handle. So we needed to incorporate some uh, some clever methods like generative models to create the response just using the give, given context uh, without the need of the dial explicit dialogue design of uh, of the next utterance or or the response. So we decided to enhance our dialogues with generative models. And uh, in this picture uh, on the left side of this slide, you can, see, you can see the scenario I was talking about where you have some kind of question, what emotion do you feel? And we are expecting happiness or sadness and everything else falls into the out of domain, uh, out of domain branch. As you can see, uh, behind the out of the main uh, branch, there is a generative model, which uh, hopefully generate meaningful response uh, for for the prompt given the context. Another another scenario for the generative models is when you are inc incorporating some external knowledge, such as you are uh, talking about uh, news or using some kind of different text uh, you found on the internet then user reacts in, in a way on it and then then you uh, you need to generate response given uh, given the article or the text and even given the context the of the conversation so those are two typical typical use cases and what does the generative model do so as you can see uh, as an input for the generator, there is a con context of the conversation. Context consists of uh, several dialogue turns. As you can see here on this slide, how, hello, how are you? I'm fine. Do you like movies? Yes, yes. which movies is your favorite? And then it generates several candidate response, responses. I kind of enjoy Dark Knight uh, and so on. Uh, I love all movies. And we need to we need to uh, do some selection uh, of the responses. So we we have a, a ranker which ranks these responses uh, to score to rescore them and select the most suitable suitable one. As the model, we we use the GPT two architecture uh, because it's uh, less uh, resource demanding than the GPT three, and we are believe. Uh, for these purposes, uh, it is uh, it is very good architecture. And uh, here you can see some generated uh, responses from the from the model. These are uh, more philosophical ones. Uh, I'd pick. Uh, I did pick. And uh, there are some. Uh, for, there are for your amusement because, as you can see. Uh, uh, in these situations, the model, uh, the model were uh, a lot of philosophical. Like, uh, for example, when a user asked what happens after death, then the model uh, reacted with the response, "Then you get reincarnated as a cat. Then you die. Then your cat gets reincarnated again." Yes, there are uh, <laughs> there are more uh, more serious responses, of course, of this of these models, but. Uh, these were these were the ones I I liked. And uh, for the last uh, slide of uh, of my presentation, I would like to share with you some ideas with uh, which we are researching, because these models are generating responses in a way that uh, you give them the context and then they produce something and. Uh, basically, you have uh, no uh, no control or next to nothing control uh, of the produced response. So we are trying to uh, incorporate some additional inputs for 
uh, for these models such as uh, such as dialog acts, dialog acts. So uh, we we are just saying, hey, hey, model, just generate me something which is statement or question, or hey, model, generate me something which is about sports, or we, we want to give uh, give the model some external knowledge to use it in the produced answers, and uh, we would like to, uh, of course, do all of the combination of all the uh, points mentioned so this is this is all from me so thank you for your attention awesome thanks Anza, uh for the great talk and also i appreciate your bridge between the past and the present so uh that's great that the attendees and uh uh, people on people watching our YouTube got the chance to uh, see how you got uh, to actually developing Flowstorm. So uh, let me again switch on the questions, and here we are. So the first one is: uh, Is it possible to learn chatbot some novel? Uh, for example, mm -hmm. Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, or anything else, and then chat with the chatbot about details in that novel. Are there any tools for that? Yeah, it is possible, but uh, it is it is really difficult. I would say we are trying to do you know, do some experiments with uh, similar things, like not uh, the whole novel, but some uh, shorter articles. Basically, you can give the model. Uh, article uh, from some news page and then you you need you want to uh, have a conversation about it so uh, these days uh, the transformer models are are being used for uh, various kinds of uh, nlp related tasks so basically this this is one of them and uh, uh, the crucial part of this uh, is of uh, is of course the data you you need to you need the, the the articles or the novels and the corresponding dialogues, and if you have a serious amount of uh, such kind of data, then you will be able to train a model that acts more or less reasonably. Of course, it will it will produce some kind of nonsenses from time to time, but uh, definitely it will uh, it will be able to talk uh, a just a little bit about. Uh, about the given text. Okay, cool. Thanks. Let me jump to the next question. And let me remind here that we are not going to have time again for all the questions. So uh, I totally recommend uh, going to Slido and vote up or down. I don't think you can vote down, but vote up <laughs> the questions uh, uh, so that we make sure that your most favorite questions are answered. So the next question is, what programming language did you use for the actual coding for the chatbot for the Alexa Prize? Yes, for the Alexa Prize, we used two uh, programming languages, Python for the machine learning related code and Java uh, for like the core of the system, which called all of these uh, Python based services. Thanks. The next question is, uh, are generative models available in Flowstorm platform? I would like to use them. Yes, they, they are. They are starting uh, last week. They are available in the platform. I believe they are included in the, in the documentation and uh, you are able uh, to, to use them. Great. Uh, having so much experience, what are the general biggest challenges in the development of real-world chatbots? What are the blockers for creating a perfect bot? <laughs> yeah, that's a nice question. Let me uh, let me describe it from two points of view. One point of view is when you are developing chatbot or trying to develop chatbot end to end. So basically, you have a lot of data. Uh, conversational based data and then you uh, then then you want to train the, your bot uh, on such data so 
basically if you have a pretty serious amount of data you will be you will be successful but uh, if you have specific demands for your bot then maybe those demands will not be reflected uh, in in the bot itself because it only learns from the data and some of the requirements may be, may be, may be missing. And the second point of view is uh, when you are uh, developing bots using some flows and designing, designing the conversation yourself, then the biggest, biggest challenge is to anticipate all of these situations that can happen in, in your conversation. And it also depends on the domain. So basically, if you if you are developing a bot which uh, which is uh, focused on some uh, specific task, then uh, you will be pretty successful to cover all of the po possibilities. But the biggest challenge is to combine these two approaches I was talking about, and uh, and to bring the best from the both worlds into the uh, into the application, which can decide who, where is to the uh, suitable time to, to use some uh, pre-designed flow and where is the time to use uh, some generated responses or trained responses from the data. Mm -hmm. So thanks. Is there any work being done on the automatic mining of the dialogues or some dialogues so that it can be then used in the dialogue flows? Well, I don't, I don't really know what is meant by the automatic mining of the sub dialogues, but uh, I can, I can describe it as I see it. We, uh, we or the conversational designers are creating the dialogues uh, uh, with the structure in in their mind so basically they know that there is some kind of uh, part of the application that can be extracted into uh, in the in the sub dialogues and then uh, it could be easily reused uh, in the uh, in the different applications but uh, we were not experimenting with something like uh, mining mining the dialogues or the structures from the like uh, uh, transcripts of the previous conversations to to some to find some uh, some patterns and mm -hmm. uh, you know like condense them into into those flows. But we were we had thought about uh, this kind of uh, research, but uh, I believe it has it has low priority now. Okay. Thanks. And let's answer the last question. Uh, why multiple models for uh, ECH intent? Ah, for each intent. Is it faster than to teach one model to recognize all intent used by a bot? Yes, I would say it is, uh, it, it is faster because we were using... Uh, yeah, I will say it in that way. You, need, you, need, you would need a bigger model for a one model per uh, per your bot, and uh, with big, bigger models, there are uh, there are bigger requirements for uh, for the training. Uh, speaking of time, and even speaking of memory, so this is one uh, one of the points uh, of uh, one of key points uh, in the decision when we decided to uh, use uh, multiple models for each for each intent. It also came with the struggles with the combination of these of these models, but we 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 really want to have the build process fast and have this ability of combining different models across uh, different applications, different uh, different sub dialogues, and uh, this is something which is uh, which is allowed by this uh, splitting of the models into individual ones. Awesome, thanks. And I know that I said that this was the last one, but since the next one is uh, saying great talk, thank you. Uh, let me also take this one and also that's a hint for everybody else for the next time uh, to include your feedback. So how many intents did you implement for the winning chatbot of Alexa Price? Well, uh, honestly, I don't know the exact number. But I know that the number of uh, the sub dialogues in the 
in the winning Alexa Price bot uh, was uh, above uh, 200. Each sub dialogues may have, I don't know, 10 intents plus some global intents applicable uh, across the whole application. Uh, so basically those those were thousands of intents, but obviously not all of them were uh, were applicable in, during uh, during each part of, of the conversation. Okay, so thanks Onza, that, that's, that's all. Let me close the questions here. Let me bro bring Tomáš back to the screen. I hope I will not surprise him. And <laughs> so, so uh, I wanted to say thank you to both of you. Uh, thanks also to all who joined us today and to all of you who will watch this later. By the way, uh, YouTube told me a few days ago that people have already spent more than 420 full days watching our videos online. So uh, sometimes when you think whether it makes sense to spend our free time on organizing meetups uh, for you, this is something that pushes us forward. And uh, let me also repeat here that uh, we want your feedback and it's exactly something that helps us to improve the meetups or uh, get us motivated uh, to, to continue with the work. So both negative and positive or even neutral comments are, are welcome. And we are moving to the networking now. So let's meet there. Uh, let me share the link uh, to the networking with you. And I hope we will see each other there. And Tomáš and Honza and I will be there. So you can ask more questions, those questions that we missed, or talk to me about possible topics or talk that you would like to give or that your company want to become a partner or whatever. And yeah, or you can just tell me your feedback or just grab a beer with your friends and don't talk to any one of us and just, you know, hide in the corner with your friend, whatever you want. That's all that's possible on the platform. So thanks again and see you there in, in a minute. Thank you too. See you there. Thank you.